Uh, we're going to go ahead and get the reception started and get our way through our announcements. Uh, as we begin the uh, reception tonight, I'd like to thank everyone for attending and congratulate all our newest members. With that in place, ladies and gentlemen and brethren, I'd like to announce the presiding officers this year from the four coordinate bodies for the Valley of Danville. As I call your name, I ask that you stand up. And I ask that we uh, refrain from applause until we have all the officers announced. And at this time, I would like you to meet the thrice potent master of the Danville Lodge of Perfection, Brother Robert A. Gill. The Sovereign Prince of the Walter A. Stevens Council of Princes of Jerusalem, Brother Jason C. Kinsalvi. The Most Wise Master of the Georgie e. Burrow Chapter of Rose Croy, Brother Christopher J. Bowen. And our Commander in Chief of the Danville Consistory, illustrious Bruce W. Reinhardt, 33rd degree. I have the honor of introducing uh, a number of distinguished guests and brethren that we have here tonight. The first being Brother Sean P. McBride, most excellent Grand High Priest of the Grand Royal Arch Chapter of the State of Illinois. each of you to the Valley of Danville and thank you for our, your attendance at uh, this reunion. And uh, with that in place, I'd like to uh, announce some of our most uh, recent uh, award recipients. Uh, our 2015 MSA, or Meritorious Service Awards winners, are Ricky K. Castile of Newton, Illinois, if he could please stand. And Brother Roland L. Meyer of Kankakee, Illinois, if he could stand if he's here. Roland's not here? All right. All right. Our, uh, our congratulations to uh, each of them uh, for their hard work and dedication to the Valley of Danville and to Masonry. And with that in place, we would like to recognize our most recent uh, 33rd degree recipients. They are uh, illustrious. John W. McBride of Danville, Illinois. John, if you could come forward. And Peter J. Eisenmenger of Villa Grove, Illinois. Pete, if you could come forward.
thanks. This was a uh, massive surprise. It was uh, kind of an understatement when I got the phone call. Um, and ironically, I was on a motorcycle riding with some friends, and I saw the call on my cell phone. I didn't didn't recognize the numbers. Didn't answer it. A little while later, I get a call again. I said, "Well, it must be important, so I better answer it." And uh, it was uh, Lester's brother Tungate, and he let me know and to say I was, like I said, to say I was floored was an understatement. Um, the whole experience was just an overwhelming experience, something I will never forget. And I hope to be able to spend the next several decades uh, proving that I was worthy of this honor. Thank you. Our uh, next presentation will be to Brother John W. McBride. It's kind of an unusual one for us in that his uh, Sean, uh, son Sean uh, gets to make the uh, presentation. also have in attendance uh, Scott and Steve, so we have all three sons uh, presenting the hat together. Congratulations, John. This is probably the hardest part for me. I'm certainly not a public speaker. But this is something that uh, I had trouble figuring out why. I can't pass myself a lot. This, this doesn't happen to, uh, I just couldn't see it happening to people like me. Bruce and uh, John and all of them made me feel uh, so welcome in, in, in Annapolis. They went out of their way and sure spent the extra time making sure that my touch was right and uh, the whole thing. Uh, it's been quite a, quite a year. We got a chance. I was given the honor to, to help on the temple. And uh, we got started and I uh, pray that Continue. Uh, there was times that I got frustrated. Uh, things weren't moving quite as fast. Everyone knows I'm patient. And uh, I, when I started, I remembered when I took the uh, first degree, I was asked, who do you put your trust in? And uh, I guess I answered in the of God. And when I get frustrated, I do this voice saying, who do you put your trust in? Thank you. Congratulations again to all our most recent honorees. And at this time, I have the privilege of announcing our uh, upcoming award nominees for the Meritorious Service Award. If they could uh, please uh, stand and be recognized, James D. Beebe and Graham P. Hauser. For the 33rd degree, if uh, Brother Sean P. McBride could stand again. I think that uh, we should remember both for our recent recipients and for our uh, newest nominees, it is a long period of time of dedication to one's community and to masonry and hard work. Uh, that brings you to these awards and that uh, we should recognize them and honor the people that uh, are introduced in this fash, uh, fashion. And at this time I would like to move on to uh, recognizing uh, a number of different people who have been longtime members. Uh, we're going to start out with the people who have 25-year uh, uh, memberships. Uh, they have had certificates mailed to them, but we do have a pin for them. If I could have our uh, heads of the bodies come up, please. As I uh, st uh, state your name, if you're here, please come up and receive uh, your 25th uh, anniversary pin. 
Stephen Michael Adder, Wilmer Lee Avery, Andrew Douglas Bessett, Ronald Allen Brown, Robert Edwin Buchanan, Randy Gale Clark, Kenneth Eugene Conrad, Larry Lee Cox, Donald Gene Doty, David L. Evans, Roger Eugene Freed, Robert Edward Fuller, Robert Wayne Geisert, William Richard Griffiths, Gary Mark Guy, Jerome O. Hardesty, Kevin Francis Harris, Dennis Reed Hatcher, Chester Allen Horn, David Michael Howard, Davy Lee Johnson, Eric Eugene Johnson, Ronald Lee Jones, William Dale Landris, Mitchell Eugene Lemon, James Ray Livesay, Michael John Mahoney, Marshall Eugene Mantilla, Keith L. Mason, Brian Thomas Mitchell, James Ira Moffat, Virgil James Noggle, Charles Roland Pennington, Rex William Richards, William Michael Royton, Bruce uh, B. Schreffler, okay. Harry Edward Seymour, Joe Roland Skinner, Douglas Ray Sprague, Daniel Curtis Stretch, Roger Lee Strubiger, Kenneth William Summers, John Edward Swan, Brad Andrew Vallon, Bobby Earl Warhorst, Dale Allen Wheeler, and Oren Herman Wiseman. Congratulations to these uh, brothers, 25 year span with the Valley. Uh, I know that one was able to appear. I know there were a few others that were at the reunion, but I would offer my hearty congratulations to their long uh, membership. Uh, with that, <laughs> we have a number of 50-year members uh, that we're honoring tonight, uh, and we have certificates for you here along with a pen. Uh, if you're present, please come up. Kenneth W. Bartlow, Sr. Wilbur, Wilbur Henry Bowles. Billy Brock. James Burke. Verlette Burrell, <coughs> illustrious Roger W. Detro, 33rd degree, Lawrence Ray Ingledow, 
Ray G. Gresham. Richard G. Jameson. Jack E. Johnson. George F. Crop. Kenneth E. Martin, Jr. Wayne E. Mathis, Monroe M. Melzer, David ne uh, Nevergall, Earl D. Pruitt, John W. Seaver, King B. Sutton. Uh, we're now going to move on to our uh, 60 years of membership. <clears throat> First one you have is uh, Gerald G. Arnholt, Jr. Some of them have gone on to the Scottish Rite and the Shrine, and uh, I'm very proud to have been able to do that. And I hope that if you have sons or grandsons or uncles or aunts or not aunts, uh, if you have, have uh, male family members, you know, get them into this. It's been very good to you, I know, standing here looking around. It's, masonry has been very good to all of you. It's been very good to me, and let's share it with our families, too. Thank you very much. Our next recipient is Dan. W. Chess Round Jr. John W. Duff. Joseph W. Elliott. Glenn M. Hutchinson. John Jones, 
Glenn Kessler, David W. Lawrence, H. Dean Rarden, David, or I'm sorry, Donald W. Van Brunt. Robert E. Vaughn. William E. Wayland. To 65 years of uh, membership, Robert M. Blackford, William H. Reynolds, and our final certificate tonight is for 70 years of membership, and that is to Harold L. Riser. We can have a nice round of applause for all our membership uh, At this time, as uh, we work our way through the reception, we honor a number of people. Uh, we had a class, I believe, of, uh, was it 17? 17 uh, new members. Uh, for a person to become a new member, not only do they have to be a Mason, and do they have to express some interest in joining the Scottish Rite, but they have to have what we refer to as a top liner. Someone will put their name on the top of the petition and say, I think this person is a, uh, is a good Scottish Rite uh, candidate. Uh, the top liners are the, uh, I guess you could say, the blood givers, the heart of uh, this organization, because without them, our recruitment doesn't happen. So if anyone who top lined a petition for this reunion who's here could stand up and be recognized, please. continuing to find uh, new members and bring uh, new people to our uh, organization. At uh, this time, I would like to make the uh, presentation for the Double uh, Eagle Award. The uh, Double Eagle Award is an uh, award from the Valley of Danville. Uh, it is one that we hold in rather high esteem and it is given to members of the Valley of Danville who we believe go above and beyond in their dedication and service not only to masonry but to the Valley of Danville in particular. And uh, this year's nominee and award winner uh, for the uh, Double Eagle Award is Stephen A. Edgar. If you could come up and receive your award please.
you know, put the harness on and start falling. Uh, that's the way I was trained. That's what I was trained to do. Is you know, the delay and everything I've been involved in. Uh, and I'm proud of all these guys. There's a lot of guys sitting out here. Should got this way before I got it. Because they're working just as hard or harder than me. I see them. You know, you said observe. You know, we need to observe. You know, that's part of the things of this master thing, this past master thing upstairs. Observe. Every time you see these guys out there working their tails off, walk up and pat them on the back and say, good job, you guys. <coughs> uh, and another thing, in uh, the last few years as I get older and I realize my own mortality and I'm sliding over the edge of the grave, you know. Uh, I step up and I ask people, how did you treat the world today? Because God's going to ask you that one day. He's going to say, how did you treat the world in your lifetime? Every day, how did how do you treat the world today? And, and if, if a guy is feeling bad, get to know that neighbor. Get to help that guy. Get next to him. How many people do we know? You only had 17 people here that knew other people to bring them into this organization. We need to sit down in the library, go to bed, and just start writing down the names of all the people that we talked to today, and say, you know, I'm going to make a concerted effort. I've never brought a person into this organization. I've been in it since '97, and I'm starting to feel kind of bad about it. We all should feel bad about it if we're not getting members into this organization. Because guys like me up there that are running a, that working in wardrobe by myself, we need help. You guys need help in the cast. I mean, I see these guys putting on a, a robe and you're going and doing a degree, then they're stripping off and they're running down to the other way, putting on it, they got their other costume underneath and they're doing another part. We need help, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We, uh, we spend the reunion talking about it, it's all about the class, and at this time I would like to recognize uh, this uh, fall class of uh, uh, Society of Past Masters. Uh, I'd like to start out with the class members, if they could, uh, when I say your name, uh, please stand up. Uh, William L. Alexander. Derek J. Ballard. William A. Evans. Richard R. Gray, David L. Hamilton, Sean R. Killian, Robert S. Meese, Gary L. Phillips, Michael A. Robinson, Charles R. Ross, Rodney S. Simmons, and William L. I apologize, is it so? Yeah. Okay. William L. Zoak. We have uh, five more members of the class to uh, announce at this time. With uh, each class, uh, they elect their own uh, class officers. Uh, they are hoped to be uh, future leaders, although people who are not elected officers are in no way prevented from being leaders. Uh, but this year's class officers, if you could please rise and uh, come forward when I announce your name. President Ian L. Petman. Vice President Clarence L. Walker III. Secretary James D. Peplo II. Treasurer is Robert W. Zoak. And our orator is James D. Johnston, Jr. Congratulations. As is tradition in the Valley of Danville, each class uh, makes a, a donation to some uh, charity or uh, benefit of their choosing and at this time I would ask the class officers and specifically President Tetman do you have a uh, contribution or donation that you would like to make? We uh, were asked to get together and support a worthy cause and one of the causes was uh, the Learning Center 
for children with dyslexia. And when I was younger, I suffered from dyslexia. And throughout my uh, years, I've got better at reading, etc. But without help when I was young, I would have been left on the wayside. So this sort of thing is uh, close to my heart. <coughs> so, Commander Chief, we have a check there for you. Three hundred and fifteen dollars. Outstanding. Thank, Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Referenced in the uh, comments, the Valley of Danville, as many valleys throughout the northern Masonic jurisdiction do, we uh, fund and run a dyslexia learning center. It is free to children throughout the Valley of Danville. Uh, it has been in operation for some time now. It takes a lot of work and effort from the uh, board that operates that, and I know that the gift will be greatly appreciated. And with that in place, the next tradition in the Valley of Danville is that the uh, class order uh, will make remarks to the group on behalf of the class. And with that, I would call up your orator, James D. Johnston, Jr. Let me begin by saying, may God lift up the people of France and God bless these United States of America. I'm very humbled to be asked to speak before all of you today. <laughs> this weekend was a weekend like no other that any of us have ever experienced before. First of all, I'd like to give each and every one of you that have worked hard this weekend to put on this degree our most sincere and heartfelt thanks. Guys, let's give them some applause. When we come here to Danville and the Scottish Rite, one thing I remember and we need to always think about is tradition. Some of you brothers told me, you in particular, next spring, this building we're standing in now will celebrate 100 years in existence. 100 years of good men becoming better. 100 years of tradition. Let us pause for a moment to reflect on those hundred years. In the first year of existence of this building, men came into here and they left and they went to war and they never came back. Some years later, men entered this building and again they left and went to war. Some of them never came back. The cycle continues to this day. So what I want us to do from our class to all of you is to remember those who went and fought and gave it all so we could be sitting here tonight free and upright men. And after you leave this building tonight Remember, because we have this freedom, I expect to see each and every member of my class back inside this building again. Thank you very much. Thank you for those remarks. Just a, a few more announcements for you, and then we can uh, move on to the uh, uh, reception. Uh, anytime we have a reunion, uh, there's a number of people that get a lot of attention, uh, a lot of recognition, and a lot of times, or if not all the times, uh, those are the people that are up on the stage, they're in the rituals, they're who everybody's paying attention to, but quite honestly, they're a very small part of it. Uh, there are a number of people uh, that go above and beyond the call of duty without a lot of recognition, uh, and I would like to recognize those people now. Uh, we have a, a wardrobe and makeup group. If uh, they could stand up, please.
providing. Uh, any of our degree directors and assistants? I know you guys are here. The uh, dining room staff. A lot of people would be upset if we didn't have the dining room staff. <clears throat> Our green coats and greeters who meet you when you come in the door. Our credentials and passport committee. Our jewelry and uh, sales staff. Our class marshals and classroom staff. A lot of people really don't realize all the work that the classroom staff does and how much help that they provide to the class. The Valley Photographers. Our Hospitality Room Committee. If you've uh, enjoyed any snacks or drinks, that's thanks to them. Our Stage Crew. Now there's a couple other people I want to recognize real quick. Uh, one of them is uh, John Larson. John, are you still here? John is our executive secretary. He organizes everything. He makes sure everything's prepared. When things go well, truly it is a credit to John. Uh, the last person I want to recognize is really a person that goes unsung, uh, and that is his secretary, Christine Baird. Is she still here? She left. Um, if you get an opportunity, come to the next reunion, call the Valley sometime, thank Christine, because like a whole bunch of secretaries in this world, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't get done here if it's not for her. She does a lot of work over the weekend for really something that she is minimally involved in other than the fact that she works here and she deserves a lot of credit and I hope when you see her, you will uh, thank her for all the work that she does. speech, but my wife told me to hold it down to at least three seconds, so this won't take long. Uh, we're going to have an afterglow immediately following this. There's no intermission, unless you have to go to the restroom. And we're going to have pizza, breadsticks, cheese sauce, and things like that. I know the weather's bad, but uh, please help us eat the pizza and the cheese sticks. And we get ready to start. Uh, we're going to go back here and pick it up. So if we'll kind of circle around this way, then we can. One person I neglected to mention as I was uh, mentioning people is uh, our uh, executive chef, uh, Robert Jones, uh, who prepares all the meals. Uh, he has done so for years. And uh, we tried to get him to come out earlier. He didn't want to do that. But if he doesn't come out, as you go through the line, please thank him and his staff. Uh, for all that they do and for the fine meals that they put on. Thank you. I have, I have no more to say other than thank all of you for uh, coming. Thank all you new 32nd degree Masons. I will expect to see you back here again uh, in April. And uh, be safe going home. Okay, one minute. Your minute's up. <laughs> no, it's uh as a lot of you know, I I don't really like getting up here and speaking. Um, I don't want to say it makes me nervous because that's obvious. But uh, I do appreciate all of you being here and spending this time together. Uh, masonry is uh, 
We've got a lot of things, but fellowship is one thing that uh, we have. Charity is another that we have, and, and those are things that uh, a lot of us enjoy. And um, that, I think the minute's up. Don't you think it is? Yeah. And again, be safe going home. Be safe. See you all next spring. Thank you.